Mina, Ohio Gazimus, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Yep, it's uh, it's Sunday morning, and here we are with uh, here we are with the Saturday message. Go, go figure, right? So I'm just gonna hop into it. The title of this video, it sounds a little clickbaity, like you want to click on it, but well, I can't say that there wasn't any thought or motivation in my heart. There, there was a little bit. I, I would like views. I want to make people think, and I want people to. Pay attention to me if possible. Won't deny it. But the title, I mean that in a very, very literal sense, as Job chapter 12 is going to uncover for us. I'm going to start with verse 6. This is Job speaking. The tents of robbers prosper, and those who provoke God are secure in what God provides by his hand. And then keep on going, but now ask the beasts, and they will teach you, and the birds of the air, and they will tell you, or speak to the earth, and it will teach you, and the fish of the sea will explain to you. Who among all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this, in whose hand is the life of every living thing, and the breath of all mankind? Skip down to verse 13. With him are wisdom and strength. He has counsel and understanding. If he breaks the thing down, it cannot be rebuilt. If he imprisons a man, there can be no release. If he withholds the waters, they dry up. If he sends them out, they overwhelm the earth. With him are strength and prudence. The deceived and the deceiver are his. And so that, that pretty much wraps it up right there. It's, it's stated very clearly. Um, there's no question in Job's voice about you know how do you know, sinners get away with their sin, whether it be lying or stealing or even something as severe as murder. How do these people do it? Well, God is the one who knit them together in their mother's womb, right? It's not, it's not just the believers. It's the non-believers as well, right? It's not just those non-believers who are going to get saved. It's also the non-believers who are going to hell, right? And if God created everything, didn't he also create Lucifer and the fallen angels? Weren't they originally the creations of his hand who rebelled against him? In fact, aren't we also the creation of his hand who, under the influence of Lucifer, in turn also rebelled against him, and he allows it all? Not only are those who are deceived, you know, given comfort by him, but the deceivers are allowed to deceive by him. He doesn't stop them. He doesn't he doesn't halt them. He doesn't hold their tongue. He doesn't make them mutes before the lie exits their mouth. He allows these things. God provides by his hand the things with which we sin against him and against each other. Now, is God for evil? No, he's not for it. If he was for it, he wouldn't have died on the cross and created hell to eradicate it and condemn it forever. But it's absolutely true that God allows it, at least right now. And if he knows everything, as I've covered in a previous message, that means he knew it was going to happen. And he still said okay. To all the people out there who are suffering, God knows what you're going through, and he allowed it. That thing in your body that didn't go quite right. Yeah, he's still the one who knit your body together. That co-worker who uh, made you lose your job. God allowed them to deceive your boss, and he allowed your boss to be deceived. He allowed both, both the deceived and the deceiver. And he allowed you to suffer for that person's sinfulness. God... He is in control of all evil. He could stop it. He doesn't. And while that is a whole, that is a whole series, and there are so many times, every evil under the sun can be addressed under that. I want to be a Christian who flat out says from his mouth for the world to hear, yeah, God allows evil. He may not be the one behind it. He may not be the one who authored it, but he certainly permits it. He certainly allows it, and therefore, there is certainly some responsibility on his end for it. The short answer is, once again, all of that is answered in the cross and in hell. That is the answer for those who wish to be forgiven, 
and it's the answer for those who do not wish to be forgiven. God does have an answer for evil um, for this life and in the next one. It may not be what you want to hear. At the same time, it is the truth. The Bible just said it right there. And if we understand any truth, to the extent we understand the truth, it can set us free. So that's it for this message. Um, if you want to hear more about this particular topic, let me know in the comments down below. This is supposed to be typing. And I will be more than happy in some future installment to cover this in a little bit more detail, maybe even in a 30-minute message. Still have plans for the 30-minute messages ahead. Still things I wish to talk about and things I want to do. But this is an important topic, and I want to at least give a brief address to the fact that, yeah, God knows what's going on. In fact, he's the one who created the stuff. He created the human bodies, and he created the world, and, and he gives the breath to the people who do these things so he is absolutely in control of it he could stop it he chooses not to and there is some responsibility in his hand for it and just to say for the last time the cross and hell are his answers to evil for those who want to be forgiven and for those who don't guys thank you very much for watching this video it's a tricky subject job is full of them and that's why i love it it just just it like hits you square in the face with the truth in all of its brutality. And I appreciate that about the Bible and the book of Job in particular. I love you guys. And God bless.